Hello and welcome to Weekend Investing Daily Bites. Uh, before we start the episode, the special announcement. Uh, Am I Evergreen offer that has been running since the New Year's is coming to a close today, 10th of January midnight. Please make use of it if you haven't so far. The code is New Year 30. Um, and also for those who are eligible for the WILD program, the the Weekend Investing Loyalty Discount Program. Uh, I want to remind you that there are two things that you can do. You can renew your current subscription at a loyalty discount and to also use that loyalty discount to add on another subscription if you'd like to for 30 days. So uh, please use that. A lot of people are not able to use it for some reason, but please make use of it as and when your renewal comes around. <clears throat> Episode 330. Uh, where does Nifty go from here? So we are somewhat in a uh, zone of confusion and I'll show you on the chart. PSU banks giving up 2.7% today. So a brutal sort of cut on the PSU banks that have been running so far. Bank Nifty overall was down minus 1.3%. And most sectors were down uh, between 0 and 1%. Only autos were shining out. Uh, maybe it is the impact of the auto expo, uh, uh, you know, uh, being held in the country after three years. Uh, maybe people are expecting that some announcements from uh, there is coming. Also, there have been some price hikes on many automobile companies. So that also may be the reason for the uh, uptick there. As you can see, all the broader indices ended in the red. Uh, the entire day was practically, uh, you know, uh, uh, spent in the red zone. Nifty losing 1%, CNX 200 and 500 losing 0.8%, small caps losing half a percent, mid and small cap losing 0.4%, and Nifty next 50 down 0.36%. In terms of weekend investing performances, all down between 0.7% and 1.8%. So no respite uh, in terms of the strategies also. Today's heat map, you can see it only Tata Motors and probably that's why auto auto uh, uh, index is up today, was up by 6%, uh, whereas other Maruti, uh, Mahindra were pretty much flat, Bajaj Auto was minus 1.2 and Aishar Motors also down 3%. Banking, there was a reasonably good cut on banking, HDFC, State Bank of India, Access Bank, ICICI Bank all losing ground. Uh, in uh, the IT stocks continue to lose ground, TCS, Infosys, Tech Mahindra all down. Bharti Infosil, Bharti Airtel cracked minus 3%. Adani Enterprise is cracking 5.4%. That's a big one. Uh, I think Mr. Adani may go from number 3 to number 4 if this continues. Uh, Adani Ports down 2.4%. Almost all Adani stocks I remember uh, during the day when I saw were down. Reliance down 1.5%, ITC down 1.38%. So it seems that the FII selling is continuing and uh, uh, there is more scope maybe to go down. Um, so this is where we are uh, after hitting a new high uh, uh, in December of 18,800 odd. Uh, market steadily came down to 17,800. Then there was a bounce to 18,250. Then there was a drop to 17,800 and a sharp bounce again yesterday. But today that uh, bounce was given up, but you know, maybe it has only come down to cover this gap here. Nifty had a gap here. So I am still hopeful that it can still go up. And if 18 to 50 gets broken, taken out, then I think uh, we are headed towards 18,800 again. So this channel is, is going to be crucial. If we break down from here, then of course, you know, maybe another thousand points uh, may be gone because this is a very important support channel that you can see here. This is also the 200 DMA at 17 to 50. Uh, my sense is that if we break this 17, 800, we are down to 16, 750. Uh, that's the kind of uh, two way zone that we have built in. Either we're going to 18, 800 or we're going to 16, 750. A lot of people will say, you know, you should uh, forecast one way. You know which way we are going but I can very uh, honestly say that I am no forecaster and I really cannot forecast any index or any stock but I can only give the setups that if this is happening if this pivot tech gets taken out we are likely going here 
But if this uh, support gets taken out, we are likely coming down here or here. And that's the best uh, sort of on a probability basis what you can see. Also, you can see uh, last 15 months, uh, Nifty is pretty much uh, sideways, range bound. It is digesting the the early uh, sort of gains we had two years in, in, the, in the two years before this. Earnings are catching up. And this is a very beautiful chart from uh, uh, Nifty. Uh, uh, I should have wrote, uh, written this here. Uh, PE ratio.com. One second, where was it? Mm. I've missed uh, giving the credits here, but this is from Nifty PE.com. I'll give you the site in the description. Um, so, this is uh, the blue line is the PE ratio chart, uh, the red line is the Nifty uh, index. So, you can see that in COVID. P crashed from 30 to 17. Then it went to 42. And of course, there were some changes in terms of consolidated versus standalone. But now we're down to 21.7, which actually, if you compare with the long term average last 20 years, we are we are somewhere near, you know, the usual uh, range that Nifty has between 17 to 22. Of course, these are extremes. Uh, so, if we are in this yellow quadrant uh, of uh, uh, one standard deviation, I think uh, we are reasonably in a in a in a good zone. So, this is something that uh, we are uh, reasonably confident that although we don't uh, use P ratios or any fundamentals for uh, the strategies, but Overall, as a market, I think the, the valuation has come off and that's what the current market is digesting. The earnings continue to go up, whereas the market remains stagnant. So the P ratios come down. This is another beautiful chart from the same website. Uh, here you can see 2020-21, uh, 2020, 2020 March, you can see P ratios crashing to 20 and then they went into the red zone. Uh, going at up to 40, 41, then coming off and now they're down to 21, 75. So just looking at this chart, you can say that, you know, we are not really in high risk zone as such uh, when it comes to the uh, market from a PE perspective, which may or may not be correct. Uh, I mean, that's another uh, debate. <clears throat> another reminder, and I'll keep giving you this reminder until you put gold allocation in your portfolio. This is the last 22 years of average returns of gold in various currencies. So you can just look at this second last column here. This is the average return of gold over the last 22 years. You can see there have been minus three negative years, 19%, 6% and 1.7%. And there have been several double digit, high double digit returns also. The average being 12.2% over these 22, 22, 23 years. So, you know, this is right in, this is sort of egg in the face of those who say that gold has no returns. Uh, you know, don't listen to people who don't understand various asset classes. You will need to look out for your own portfolio because equities will not give you, you know, returns every year going forward. And, have, and, and, and they haven't done that in the past as well. So Nifty in the last five to 10 years may have given you similar returns, but with much more volatility here. So always good to have hedge and always good to have diversification uh, in your portfolio. So uh, on, the, on the topic of gold, we have MI Evergreen, which is CNX 200 stocks with the protection of gold. And you know how MI Evergreen has performed uh, since July, June to 2022, it's up 37% versus CNX 200 at 18.9. And the last... Uh, six, eight months, you can see that this this enormous outperformance has come out just because it was hedged with gold and the gold was able to, uh, you know, take care of the uh, flat nifty. Uh, so, so this is something that you must take uh, into account. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, this is the last day to subscribe to the MI Evergreen offer with New Year 30 code. So this is all I had in today's Daily Byte. I hope you continue to share these videos with your friends and family. I hope you take out some in insight and 
new learnings from these videos please let me know if you do please let me know if you don't and uh, i'll see you in another video bye